In 2014, Flappy Bird becomes the most downloaded free game on the App Store, and this game was created by Vietnamese programmer Dong Nguyen in just a few days. This incredible success of the game during that period allowed the developer to earn $50,000 a day from in-app advertising as well as sales. Initially, I wanted to tell you how to make a similar clone of the game using the Python language in the Pygame module, but as it turned out, there were a lot of similar tutorials on YouTube. Therefore, in this video we will do Flappy Do So the initial setup of our project will consist of five files, main, bird, pipes, game objects and settings. And in the assets folder there will be sprites for the animation of the bird's flight, basic sounds for the game and images for the background, ground and top pipe. In order not to waste your time on elementary things, I have already posted the basic code from which we will start making the game. So in the settings file, variables are defined for the screen resolution, the frame rate value and the scrolling speed which supposedly means the speed of the bird. Let's take a look in the main file, the necessary modules and all the files of our game are imported here. Next comes a typical Pygame class called Flappy Doom, in the constructor of which we initialize Pygame modules, create a rendering screen and an instance of the clock class. For this project, we need the load assets method and the new game method. In the draw method, the screen is painted black and the frame is drawn. In the update method, for now, we set only the frame rate. We check events by a separate method, here we check for an event to close the application. And in the run method there is the main loop of the game, where we alternately call the methods for checking events, update and draw. And at the end we create an instance of our class, for which we call the run method. And so far at this stage we have a black window of the set resolution for our game. And for starters, I suggest loading sprites for our bird in the load assets method, as well as calling this method and the new game method from the class constructor. At the same time, we can immediately create a group for all the sprites of our game. Then for this group we will call the draw method indicating the drawing screen, and we will also need to call the update method. Let's check that everything works without errors, and go to the bird file. Here we will create a bird class that will inherit from the sprite class. The constructor will take an instance of our game as input, with the help of which we will get access to the sprite group and also define the first sprite as a self-image and take a rect from it. Let's define the position on the screen for our bird in the settings file. And then you can assign this value to the self-rect attribute for the center. And now we can create an instance of our bird and see how it is displayed. As you can see, our bird is perfectly rendered in the indicated place, but let's increase it a little in size. To do this, we define the scaling factor bird scale, and since all sprites are the same size, then based on the first sprite, we get its width and height, and multiply these values by the bird scale value. And then you can scale all the sprites according to the resulting size. So we got a simple mechanism for changing the size of the sprite, and let's try to animate our bird. To do this, we will use the DeQ module from the Collections module. Then we will create an instance of the queue with our sprites. And here it is necessary to determine the time interval through which the animation of the bird will occur, it is set in milliseconds. Now we can assign an event to perform the animation, and we need to initialize the timer with the number of this event and the animation time of the bird. So, first of all, we need a method for animation, when we call it, we rotate the queue with our sprites, and assign the first sprite again to self-image. And we will run this animation method from the event check method only when we meet the animation event specified for our timer. And we will call this event check method from the method where all our events for our application are checked. Well, as you can see, we got the animation of our bird in a rather simple way, and now our bird is in complete darkness, so I propose to create a background for our game. Then to do this, we first load an image for our background, and in doing so, we scale it according to the resolution value of the game. So let's go to the game objects file and write the background class, at the input of the constructor we will get access to the game instance, determine the initial x and y coordinates, the scroll speed and the background image itself. In the update method, we will shift the background to the left by taking the remainder of the division by the negative width value of the resolution. 
Then, in the draw method, we can apply two background images to the drawing screen with a width step along the x-axis, which will ensure its continuous movement across the screen. Then we need to create an instance of this class in the new game method, now instead of painting the screen with black, we will call the draw method, and also call the update method. This way we get an animated background for our game, and let's now create the ground to which the pipes will be attached. For the ground, we need to define its height, and based on this value, we also calculate the position of the ground along the y-axis. Let's load the image of the ground in a similar way, but only scale this image already taking into account the value of the height of the ground. Next, we will write the ground class, where we inherit from the background class. And here we just need to redefine the attributes for the y-coordinate, scroll speed and specify the image of the ground itself. As in the case of the background for the game, it remains to create an instance of the ground class, and call the draw and update methods. And now we have a pretty nice picture with a parallax effect, as the background moves more slowly, which gives depth to the whole picture of the game. And now it's time to use gravity in our game, let's define the value of gravity in the settings and move on to the bird class. Here we define the initial attribute for the falling velocity, and in a separate method, using the equations of uniformly accelerated motion from physics, we will change the falling velocity and the position of the bird along the y-axis according to the value of gravitational acceleration. And we will call this method from the update method. So now our bird is subject to the laws of physics in the form of gravity, and now it's time to give our bird the opportunity to flap its wings so as not to fall. To do this, we define the bird jump variable and assign a negative value to it, then we can return to the event check method and check for a left mouse button press, and if such an event occurs, we can call the jump method. In this method, we simply equate the falling velocity value with the bird jump value. And as you can see, our doom bird has the ability to fly, and so to speak, flap its wings. By the way, so that the bird does not fall at the very beginning of the game, you can define a boolean variable for the first jump, and only if this variable is true, we will activate gravity. And as a result, the bird does not fall anywhere until we click the left mouse button. But besides everything, if we look at the original game, we can see that with each flap of the wings, the body of the bird turned up a certain angle, and when it fell, its body rotated towards the ground. Let's also implement such rotations, and then we will define the value of the angle by which the bird turns up when jumping. Let's introduce an attribute for the angle of rotation and write the rotate method. Here, when making the first jump, we will look at the value of the falling speed. When making a jump and increasing the speed to a certain value, our angle will be equal to the jump angle value. Otherwise, according to the falling speed, we will rotate our bird clockwise up to an angle of minus 90 degrees. So, we will call this method when an animation event occurs, and if we look at the result, we can make sure that such a doom bird rotation mechanism works quite correctly, and by the way, now we can implement collisions for our game and start from the ground. Then let the collision check method be called from the update method. And in this method itself, we will check if the value of the ground coordinate has crossed the bottom of the bird, and also we will not allow it to fly up to a height above its size outside the screen, if this happens, then we will make a slight delay and call the new game method. Let's check, and as we can see the bird is now crashing on the ground, and also it is not allowed to fly high. And by the way, at this stage, I wanted to diversify our game with sound. Let's go to the game objects file, and create a simple sound class, in the constructor of which we will load the sounds prepared for the game in a standard way, this is the sound of hitting, getting a point and flapping wings. Now we can create an instance of this class in the constructor of the main application, and let's play the sound of hitting when colliding with objects, and play the sound of flapping wings when making a jump. Well, now the game becomes much more interesting when the original sounds from the Doom game are played. And as you probably understand, it came to implement pipes in our game. First of all let's set the size of the pipes in width and height, and then we load the image of the top pipe and scale it. Besides, we will get the image of the bottom pipe using the flip method. 
and let's create a separate group for the pipe sprites. Then we can go to the pipes file, and here we will write the main class that will handle the generation of all pipes in the game. But first, let's define variables for the distance between the pipes and a value for the height of the gap between the top and bottom pipes. Let's return to the class and define the attribute pipe dist. Then write the update method in which we will call the pipe generation method, and when the bird has made the first jump, we will begin to increase pipe dist by the scroll speed value, and when this value exceeds the distance between the pipes, this will become a trigger for generation new pipes. And in order to generate them, we need to get the Y coordinate to determine the position of the gap between the pipes. To do this, we will use the random module, and we will receive this random value using a separate static method. And having received this coordinate, let's for example create an instance of the top pipe class. So, in the top pipe class, we inherit from the sprite class, when we run the super function, we additionally pass our group for pipes into it. Here we will take an image for the pipe and form its rect, and based on the gap Y value, we will determine its initial position, taking into account the height of the ground, and initially the pipe will be behind our visible screen. In the update method, we move it at scroll speed and stop rendering when the pipe goes beyond the left border of the screen. So, to check the generation of the upper pipes, let's create an instance of the pipe handler class in the new game method, and call its update method. And as you can see, we have the correct generation of the upper pipes, but before adding a collision with them, let's create a class for the bottom pipes. Creating this class is quite simple, for this we need to inherit from the top pipe class, and redefine the image for the bottom pipe, and also assign a position for the pipe, but only for the rect top left attribute. And in the pipe handler class, we will similarly create an instance of the bottom pipe. So at this stage, we have almost all the elements for our game, and now let's get into the collision detection of a bird with pipes. Then let's return to the method of checking collisions of the bird class. Let's create a hit variable and use the sprite collide method on our bird and pipe group. And add this hit value to the collision detection condition check. If we start the game, then when we try to fly through the pipes, it becomes obvious that such a collision works very strangely and most likely incorrectly. To make it clearer, let's draw a rect for the sprite of our bird on which the collision occurs. And obviously the collision isn't exactly accurate, our rect stays the same when the sprite is rotated. And if we take rect at each iteration depending on the self-image, then this will not bring the desired result either. The rect itself just gets bigger as the bird rotates, which makes collision detection even worse. Therefore, I propose to calculate the collision by the mask, and at each iteration we take the mask from the self-image, and in the sprite collide method we select the mask collision detection function. But then we also need to take a mask from our pipes, since their image does not change, then we will do this in the class constructor. And again, to make it clear, let's display the mask of our bird in green using the toSurface method. This way you can see the pipes collide with the mask taken from the bird, which makes this method the most accurate, but still not always convenient, since we don't really want sprite decorative elements such as hair or something similar to affect collision. And here I propose to draw a mask yourself, so to speak, draw a hitbox for our sprite and save it as a separate file. And in this case, we will load and scale the image of our mask in the same way as we did for the bird sprites. So now we need to take a bitmask from the image intended for the mask, and in the jump method, that is, at each iteration, we also rotate our drawn image and take the mask from it. And in this way we get a fairly convenient hitbox for our game, that is, the gameplay itself is already becoming much more pleasant, and it remains for us to implement a method for counting and displaying the points scored. So let's turn off the rendering of our mask, and go to the pipe handler class. Here we will create a list for pipes and a counter of past pipes, and in the pipe generation method, we only need to add one kind of pipes to this list. And then in a separate method, iterating over these pipes, we keep track of whether the bird crossed the right side of the pipe, in which case we add one point and remove this pipe from the list. It remains to call this method from the update method. And in order not to overload this class with other methods, we will create a simple score class in which we will load a suitable font and determine the position of the inscription. 
In the draw method, we get information about the points scored from an instance of the pipe handler class, render the inscription and place it at the specified coordinates. Then you can create an instance of the score class in the constructor of our game, and accordingly call the draw method from the method of the same name. Let's look at the result. As expected, we get a display of the points scored, and here we can say that we have all the main elements of the game ready, but we are making Flappy Doom. And in the previous video, I showed how to implement the Doom Fire algorithm using the Python language in the Pygame module. Therefore, let's not only have sprites and sounds from Doom in our Flappy Doom game, but also add this fire to the background. And so let's look at the final result of our Flappy Doom game.